How's it going, everybody? Hope you're all doing well. I have another light review for you today. This is the Spider Farmer SE7000, which is their new bar light. So a lot of manufacturers lately are moving away from the classic board style light that we've seen over the past couple years in favor of these big bar lights or strip lights. And the more of these I test, the more I understand why this trend is happening. So the nice thing about these bar lights is they have such a big footprint that they practically cover the whole grow space, you know, lengthwise, widthwise, you look up and it's just all diodes. And the uniformity that you can get across the grow space, you know, the distribution of the light is insane. You can have corners that are seven, eight, nine hundred PPFD and almost the same in the center. Whereas, you know, the old board style, you'd have a center of like 1500 and then it drops off to maybe 300 in the corners or something like that. So great uniformity, good coverage throughout and, and big numbers too. I'm very eager to see how this light does against the Spider Farmer SF series. I've tested their SF 4000, which is rated for the same grow spaces, a four x four or a five x five. And like most board lights, that one does drop off quite a bit in the corners. So if the SE series can fix that, I think this will be the way to go. But let's unbox it, build it and test it and we'll see. Okay, some strips. Wow, they are, these diodes are very dense in the, on the sides here. That's crazy, I don't know if you can see that. There's quite a few packed into each one of these strips, holy cow. This is pretty heavy. What is this? Must be the side rails. There's another one. But that's attached to something. More strips. Power cable, rope hangers, end pieces, manual. And a driver, a Moso driver. Which apparently is a 650 watt unit. I think that's it. Okay, I've got all my parts laid out now. So I have my six strips, my two side pieces. I've got the driver assembly, the power cable. This power cable is attached to the side rail. And then I've got a couple of rope hangers and then the little aircraft cable hangers as well. And one telephone cable kind of thing for daisy chaining the dimmer control boxes. So if, if you have multiple lights, you can just chain them all together and then dim from one single spot. Then I've got end caps to tidy up the ends of these uh, side pieces. These orange screws are what hold the top caps onto the bottom caps here. So there's four threaded holes, uh, two on each end of each rail. And then these black screws here are what hold the driver assembly onto the strips. They just thread into little holes on this assembly here and it's kind of like a pressure fit into the side of the strip. All right, so first things first, 
I'm going to take these little top caps off of these side rails. And if you look inside, there are all these little white uh, connectors. So the ones on the side that have the power cable have like a little black actual electrical piece inside, like an electrical receptacle, two prong. And then on the other side that has no cabling on it, it's just got the white connector and there's nothing actually in it. It's just to hold the strips in place. So this is just the dummy side. So each one of these strips, one side has nothing. The other side has a couple prongs on it. So you can guess where the prongs go. Running out of space here. Just enough. So they just kind of fit in like that. And repeat. Okay, now these top pieces can go back on. And then these orange screws hold them in place. Put my end caps on now. Okay, and then we can throw the driver on. I think I'll put it on this way. So all my cabling comes out the one side. So eyeball this for center. Pretty close. Thread these black screws in. It's just like a nylon screw that, like I said, it's kind of a pressure fit onto the side of the strip. And cabling. There's the AC. And then here is the DC. And it's a nice push lock connector. So you just push, push it together. And then if you want to take it off, you twist it and you can pull it out. Probably put some Velcro on this or something to tidy it up nicely, but that's it. I guess all that's left to do is put on these hangers. And then obviously these two ratcheting rope hangers 
would need to clip on to one side of this thing. So the whole assembly hangs by these two points and these guys are putting a lot of faith in these aircraft cables. I mean, they can hold a ton of weight, but this thing is heavy. Good God. <laughs> so I think it'll be fine, but yeah, that's a lot of weight for the two hang points, but I'm sure they've done their research. So that's it. Let's take a quick look through the specs for this light. This thing is an absolute unit. The dimensions are just shy of 46 inches by 46 inches, which means you can just squeeze it into a 4x4 tent. It's not light either at 16.4 kilograms or 36 pounds. Spider Farmer claims a PPF or photosynthetic photon flux of 1780 micromoles per second, which is an indication of how many photosynthetically active photons are being produced by the light every second. Power consumption by the driver is rated for 650 watts AC, and efficacy is reported at 2.75 micromoles of light per joule of energy. The light is rated for 50,000 plus hours and has a five-year manufacturer warranty on it. Spider Farmer suggests a hang height of 12 to 24 inches for this light in either a 4x4 or a 5x5 space, and we'll be testing both. Each of the light bars has 550 diodes on them, 15 Osram Deep Reds and 535 Samsung 3000K and 5000K whites. With six bars, the SE7000 has a total of 3300 diodes. The bars are spaced out on the frame to provide more light at the edges of the fixture rather than spacing them equidistant, which is a good idea and should help prevent center hotspots. The bars themselves are pretty sturdy and the frame pieces are especially rigid so the whole assembly is totally solid. Let's check out how this thing actually performs now. After my standard 30 minute warm up at 100% power, the light drew 632 watts on the AC side, which when you factor in conversion losses on the DC output side would likely work out to a little under 600 watts on the output, so somewhere around 95 watts being fed to each bar. The dimmer knob has indicators for power percentages on it. At 80% power, I measured a 466 watt draw, 50% was 246 watts, 20% was 120 watts, and dimmed all the way down with 69 watts. As for temperature, after the warm-up, the bars measured between 41 and 43 degrees Celsius, depending on where you put the probes, and the driver case measured about 40 degrees Celsius. For PPFD, or photosynthetic photon flux density measurements, I measured the SE7000 in both a 4 foot by 4 foot and 5 foot by 5 foot reflective space with my automated measuring system that moves an Apogee SQ500 quantum sensor around on a custom gantry. I recorded heights from 6 inches to 36 inches for both grow space sizes at 2 inch intervals and I've compiled all my results and data at my new website that I'm using to build a PPFD database, which is ppfdcharts.com. Go ahead and check it out for a closer look at everything that I'm about to show you. Now, given the fact that this thing is pulling over 630 watts, it's pretty obvious that it's going to absolutely destroy a 4 foot by 4 foot space. I mean, really, one of the biggest factors that'll come into play if you're thinking about running this in a 4x4 is, is the performance worth the price tag? Is it competitive with other 4x4 lights in terms of performance and value? Let's check out the 4x4 numbers, starting at a 6-inch hang height. Funny enough, with this light, the center readings tend to be the lowest across the space. You can see a little tinge of orange in the middle where the PPFD measurements came in in the 750 to 850 micromole per meter squared per second range among a sea of red 1000 plus measurements everywhere else in the 4x4. The highest reading at 6 inches came in at 1648 and the lowest was 706 with an average of 1092 over the whole space. The entire space read over 700 micromoles and about 58% of it read over 1000 micromoles here. Moving the hang height up increases the uniformity quickly. I'll skip ahead to 12 inches, which looks pretty nuts. At 12 inches, our uniformity is over 72%, with a maximum reading of 1212 and a minimum of 874. The average reading at 12 inches is still 1023, and over half the canopy measured in excess of 1000 micromoles per meter squared per second. The rest of these charts look just as pretty, and as you increase the hang height, the uniformity continues to climb while the average PPFD slowly falls. If we jump up to 18 inches, we're seeing uniformity of 87% and an average of 978. If we go right up to the max hang height I recorded of 36 inches, uniformity is 89% and the average is still 847. I'd say the sweet spot for this light is somewhere in the 12 to 18 inch hang height range, which will deliver a lot of photons. 
Of course, this is just if you're looking to maximize PPFD and maintain reasonable uniformity, and you'll need to make sure that your plants can actually take this beating, which they may balk at. Let me zip through all the 4x4 readings quickly for you now, and feel free to skip to the next chapter in the video timeline if you want. So this thing is insanity in a 4x4 as expected, but how's it do in a 5x5? The extra square footage that you've got to cover in a 5x5 makes a pretty big difference in the charts, as you can see. Despite the enormous footprint of this light, we'll still see some low numbers in the corners, especially at low hang heights like the 6 inch height you're looking at now, but this is pretty much unavoidable in a 5x5, and this thing still covers the space more evenly than 90% of the 5x5 lights out there. Let's find some more reasonable heights to compare. If we go back to the same 12 to 18 inch range that we discussed in the 4x4 results, I think we find the optimal heights for the 5x5 as well. Uniformity at 12 inches is about 30%, and the very corners read about 300 micromoles, and these corners continue to increase as you move the light higher. About 55% of the space is reading over 700 micromoles per meter squared per second here at 12 inches. At 16 inches, we're in the mid 300s in the corners with uniformity at 44% and an average of 666 over the whole space. And at 18 inches, we're just shy of breaking the 50% uniformity mark with an average of 655. We hit 70% uniformity at 28 inches and 80% at 36 inches at an average of 572 PPFD. Here are the rest of the 5x5 measurements for you now. Covering a 5x5 without making your frame absolutely humongous is no easy task, but I'd say the SE7000 does a pretty good job of it. In my opinion, you're getting a lot of light for your money with the SE7000, and it's a top contender in terms of best bang for buck in a 4x4 or 5x5. You can build this thing in 15 minutes or less probably with no tools, and you end up with a very large footprint that you wouldn't get from a pre-assembled board light. I haven't yet had the chance to test the SF7000, which is the foldable board light from Spider Farmer, but based on experience, I don't think the SF lights can hang with the SE series just because of the beautiful coverage that you get with the distributed bars. If you want to check this thing out, I've added a link in the description, and you can use the coupon LEDG for a discount on this light on the Spider Farmer store. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.